Hey, I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Body Stuff. Now, it's been a minute since I put a video out. I kind of took last week off just to uh, get reacclimated to my new schedule because I went from being on night shift for the last pretty much seven years to a day shift. And also a set schedule. I'm working Sunday through Thursday now and having Fridays and Saturdays off. Uh, my schedule before was a rotating schedule, and I only had... A weekend off a calendar weekend off every five weeks so it was kind of rough to uh, do any type of planning for events on the weekends but now pretty much gonna have every Friday Saturday off and we're gonna try to get some stuff done try to go to some events uh, I went over some of that in my last video uh, of some of the events we got coming up but one we got coming up that I just found out about for sure is uh, on March 11th and it's probably gonna be one of the one of the first ones we're gonna take old squeaky out to Paducah Kentucky which is about I think four hours away and set him up on the rollers at the James James show YouTube channel uh, they're putting up a free deal where we can come out and hang out I think there's uh, I'm gonna say there's a car show or maybe a uh, something else going on that weekend but they've invited whoever wants to come up uh, kind of our no-name nationals family uh, to go over there hang out for the day and it just so happens to be my birthday weekend so we're gonna go I'm just gonna say I'm celebrating my birthday at this deal so but we're gonna take squeaky up there putting on a roller see what this big block does uh, and also speaking of putting on rollers or doing some dyno testing there is a shop about an hour away from me that just got a set of hub dynos now they're gonna have that hub dyno, it's portable, so they're gonna have it at the car show or the truck show this September. But I don't wanna wait that long. Uh, what my plans are, uh, I'm kinda of jumping all over the place, I'm getting kind of excited about this. The plans are, is we're not gonna be able to probably get the 339, which it's on a stand, we're gonna be working on that. I'm gonna be getting to that here in just a minute, we'll be working on that in this video, but. Uh, I want to go with some other stuff first, but the plans are uh, I'm probably not going to be able to get any dyno time at the machine shop. I've talked to them and we we might, but with having access to the hub dyno, dyno is just an hour or so away. Uh, if I wanted to, I could always hook up again with James and James show after after we get the 339 in and put squeaky on the rollers there and it'll be more of an a or a apples to apples comparison between the big block it's in him to the small block that's sitting on stand right now and that'll be a better comparison i would really like to see that because otherwise uh i'd have to pull the big block out stick him on the dyno down at the machine shop to really get a good comparison and so if we put them on the rollers or put them on the hub dyno the same machine get the same data and stuff it'd be cool i think it'd be really cool to see what the difference is and on the uh, either the hub dyno or the rollers i can i'll be more likely to be able to use the nitrous to really see what we're doing on the nitrous kind of get some tuning done on it so uh on the uh on the dyno at the machine shop uh, i'm not going to be able to spray it on that dyno they just uh, it's just not a good atmosphere or a good place to do it because I have to have my set up there. It's just, it's a, it's a mess. All right, enough of that. Uh, there's another cool thing. My youngest son, Shelman, you've seen him on the channel before. Uh, he made me this. Him and his girlfriend, Tasha, made me this picture of old Squeaky at No Name Nationals last year. This has got to be probably one of my favorite pictures of this truck, even though he, he doesn't have the stickers on the fenders yet, and uh, which I do like him without the bumper better. But he doesn't have the hood. You can't see the hood scoop, but that's all right. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures of Squeaky, the flag floating in the background. It's just really cool. I really appreciate it, Shelman. Now I've got to figure out a place to put it in the shop. I'm thinking about hanging it above my toolbox there. i got a spot. Of course, eventually take this corner of my shop where the toolbox is and move the toolbox somewhere else and actually make kind of a corner office area put a desk in and maybe put a little ceiling in there or something but anyways uh yeah cool picture thanks again shellman um 
I plan on setting up a P.O. box, so if any of you guys, any of my fans, want to send me anything, you can send it to my P.O. box. Haven't got that set up yet. Just one of those things, when I get to town, I forget to do it. But we're going to get that set up soon. Also, we're going to be working on getting a uh, website set up so we can sell the merchandise. Uh, but for the meantime, if you guys are interested in hats or the t-shirts, I've got a couple hanging up over there. Or these patches. Uh, just hit me up in the comments or email me at squarebodystuff79 at gmail.com or go to Facebook or Instagram and hit me up in private messages there. We'll try to figure out something until we get our website going. Another cool thing about these patches is you can put them on your shirts. And I've got them on Squeaky's headrests on his seats. I just used a heat gun to heat them up, to get them really stick. All sorts of uses for them. So, get you some patches. I've also got some keychains. Grab one of them real quick. These are kind of cool. A little square body step up, it's upside down. But it's basically smaller patches that I've stuck together, punched holes, put some brass grommets in, and put a little dilly bobber on there to. Put your keys on so you can order these too just uh get a hold of me somehow and we'll see if we can get you some merchandise now let's talk about this little guy my little 339 stroker i know i've been dragging this project out it's just been one thing after another and excuses excuses whatever uh but we're gonna try to really get busy on this thing get this thing knocked out uh what we're gonna be doing today is i've still got to relieve the block uh, to unshroud the valves on these because I am running 202 160 valves on this 305 a lot of people say you can't do that Blah blah blah. Well, you can and it will work uh, What little bit the valves are shrouded because of the bigger valves uh, You still got enough surface area on the other side of the valve. That's really gonna help out flow So it can't hurt anything uh, You just got to do some work on the block which is stuff I do on big blocks anyways uh, most of your big blocks will be relieved on the on the top of the block for to unshroud the valve. So I'm going to show you how I do that, what I've got going on. Yeah, just to, just sit back and and enjoy the show. And what I've got going on here is I've got my cylinder heads set up to make a template to transfer the shape of the combustion chamber to the block. Uh, now the cylinder heads are Speedmaster 195s, I believe, 202 160 valves, and they seem to be pretty good. I'm I'm excited to see what they how they do. They'll be a lot better than the heads I was gonna use on these on this engine, uh, and for the price, I couldn't I couldn't pass it out or pass it up because they were got them on a real good deal. Uh, but this clear plastic, all it is is the back side of the carburetor kit packaging this is real cool stuff to uh, save and I've got a few pieces of it in a in my drawer over there so I can make templates out of it it's easy to work with uh, I kind of got a little bit off there and this is actually my second attempt the first one is even worse but all I'm really worried about is from this point over to about where it's kind of goofed up to transfer to the top of my block. I hope it's showing up on the camera where the reliefs are going to be. Uh, but doing it this way, I can actually get a, a perfect transfer of my combustion chamber shape versus the top of the deck. And I can take this off and I'll show you how it translates or how the uh, head gasket is going to come into play on all this as far as clearance Which it's going to work out great. I've already played with this kind of Getting it figured out before I've done a video of it So at least it appears to look like I know what I'm doing Now you can see the lines that is my combustion chamber shape These are the head gaskets I'll be using and the edge of the combustion chamber comes right to the edge of the head gasket. So that's going to work out perfectly. So now we need to figure out how deep we want to go into the hole 
for our relief and obviously you don't want to go any further down than your top ring actually you don't want to go all the way to there because you want your rings to seal up uh, I'm gonna use well I'm gonna use this old 305 ring to put in there to trace off of and I'm gonna use a standard used 350 ring as a spacer and it measures out to about 75,000 something like that and I've got the top ring in my piston and just like you're checking ring gap just set it down in there and that'll give me a place to mark and I'll have 75 thousandths worth of wiggle room if I do happen to go over my line just a little bit uh, I'm still going to have plenty of space to where I'm not getting into my, uh, to where we'll get to my top ring. I'll transfer my lines. I'm not sure if you can see with all the shadows and everything, but this ring, uh, this is it was one of the rings that came out of this engine when I was running all the nitrous 250 shot of nitrous and I figured out why it wasn't sealing all that great this ring from about here to the end is curled in of course it does have a lot bigger gap because this is 60 over but this ring was not sealing both yeah both ends are curled in uh, even on a tighter bore, it, it wasn't sealing up very well. I think I was pretty close to uh, having a catastrophic failure on that engine. But we saved it before we destroyed everything. And now we're making something better out of it. Well, hopefully it's better. Hopefully this will be better than a stock 305. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull all these pistons out. i got to uh, pull everything down. I'm going to try to tape off the block as much as I can. So I don't get metal shavings in every little hole. It'll hopefully save time on my final cleanup before I start assembling this thing. Well, it took a little bit, but got it all done. Turned out looking pretty good. Let me show you what I've got. I've got the head gasket just set on this side. Just to make sure everything looks okay. 
everything's coming out right. I've got these setup springs on these two valves, so I can actually show you when I flip this over what kind of uh, what kind of help it does with the unshotting these valves by clearancing the deck. Now I kind of wish I would have left one cylinder undone to show the difference, but I think you guys can get the idea. Uh, but this is actually way more lift, yeah, quite a bit more lift than what I'm going to have with the cam. Uh, I think I'm going to be gross five, 540, 5, 550 lift on the exhaust side. And this is close to 600 thousandths. So uh, this will be more than what the cam is actually going to be lifting the valves. So I'll flip it over, try to get some light in there, and show you what's going on inside the cylinder. Now I know it's going to be hard to see exactly what's going on in there because I can't get the camera all the way down in the hole, but there's the intake valve. And the exhaust valve. I wish I can get the camera all the way down in there to show you, but there is a quite a bit of quite a bit of difference. Because I was able to open these valves all the way like this before I relieved it. But as you can see, that exhaust valve had been right real close to it. Same on the intake. But now with that relief on the top of the block, uh, you can get more airflow. Now, that's just, that's just one of the hurdles i got to overcome with this small bore setup. Yes, if I would have used a 350 block with a 4-inch four, four bore... Or 4060 bore, 60 over. Yeah, I wouldn't have had that problem. But we're not building a standard 383. We're not building anything regular. We're doing something a little different. So you gotta, you gotta do some tricks. And you might be asking, what does that do with the compression? Well, it does lower the compression ratio down just a little bit because I'm adding volume to the combustion chamber. Uh, not really sure how much I'm gonna say probably maybe four cc's uh, but that's still gonna probably get keep me uh, at nine and a half to ten to one now originally when I designed or not designed but when I was gonna put this engine together the reason I chose flat top pistons is because the cylinder heads I was gonna use originally were 58 cc combustion chambers uh, but they would have needed a lot of work to even come close to flowing what these heads will and these aren't the best heads either I know but we're only trying to run 339 cubic inches we're not you know it's not a 434 it's not a not a big inch small block so with that said uh, I'd already ordered the pistons had those and everything was balanced before I got these new heads, which are 64 cc's. So, and with the way everything it was, without relieving this block, I was still gonna be right at 10 to one compression, which is perfectly fine. Uh, Cause this is gonna be a street driven engine. I don't wanna have to worry about running uh, race gas or anything like that um, while I'm on the street. So if it ends up at nine to one, I'm perfectly happy with that. It'll be It'll be easier to tune, uh, be more forgiving when I'm, whenever I'm running the nitrous. Uh, and, but the thing of it is, is in my mind, what little bit I lost on the compression because of relieving the block, I gained, I gained way more in flow. So, I, I mean, I, it, this is one of those things where I wish I had a dyno to where I could put this engine together without relieving the block take a dyno run a few you know get get some data tear it back down relieve the block what i just did and then put it back on the dyno see what it gained the the big thing is it's going to be more efficient it's going to help the flow um but it is what it is at this point this is where we're going the block can't be undone uh these are the heads i'm going to use this is a combination i've got and we're going to make the best of it and I'm, I'm hoping it impresses some people. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm anxious to get it going. Uh, 
I'm gonna really work hard on trying to stay focused on this project but every time I do something else comes up and daily drivers uh, trump this and you know the truck is the truck is running and driving right now so I don't have to have an engine in this truck and there's there's more I want to do with this 454 as far as playing around with it get some get some track time with it get some play time with this 454 see what it's about that's pretty much all I've got uh, I've kind of run out of time tonight to work on anything so I'm gonna end it off here I appreciate you guys watching um, hopefully somebody's learned something and yeah so until next time y'all keep her square bodies rolling and we'll catch you later